Today we examine four unsolved mysteries. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Thank you for letting us into your brains, your minds, your thoughts, your ears, your eyes, your hearts, your soul hmm. on a daily basis. If you had the privilege of watching television in the late 1980s, you may remember a little show called Unsolved Mysteries featuring Robert Stack. Join me, perhaps you may be able to help solve a mystery. Robert was amazing, he had an amazing trench coat and an amazing voice. I mm -hmm. watched it with my grandma, I watched it with my mom, oh, and I was, always, affair. I was always intrigued by the unsolvedness of said mysteries. They never solved them, um, no lo closure. Lo and behold, um, no more show like that, but we're gonna channel that energy of the 80s yeah. into our own unsolved mysteries segment, which um, we kinda need to change the name, so we're gonna call it Inexplicable Enigmas. An Enigmas? Enigmas. Enigmas. Inexplicable enigmas. Okay, um, so I got a couple, you've got a couple? Yeah. Um, okay, here's the first one. Let me channel my Robert Stack. Hmm. On November 22nd, 1987, Chicagoans were huddled around their televisions watching a rerun of the Doctor Who episode, Horror of Fang Rock. Suddenly, the TV signal was hijacked by a mysterious person moaning, laughing, speaking incoherently, and wearing a Max Hedra mask. I'm gonna show you a clip here. And imagine, just watching TV in the 80s, you Doctor Who in it up, and then all of a sudden, this breaks in. I'll get you a hot drink, man. There he is. Pretty scary, right? This is not uh, part of the Doctor Who broadcast. Doctor Who can be a weird show, but. Not this weird, not this lo-fi. He held up a Pepsi. Yeah, it said, yeah. It said, the, it said the catchphrase, catch catch a wave, catch the wave. Well, that was a, a Coke catchphrase because you may not know that uh, Max Hedrum yes. is an 80s icon, uh, the first computer generated TV host in Britain, exported to America and was in Coke commercials. Right. I thought he was pretty cool and creepy as a kid, but that masked version was even creepier. But he didn't, the thing that makes Max, Max Headroom, Max Headroom is the stuttering. He wasn't able to simulate that. Fail. He appeared there and a little bit earlier in the nine o'clock news. They never figured out who it was. There was a clip I won't show you. It jump cuts to him with his pants down, hmm. and Thank a woman in that. a French maid outfit is swatting his hiney with a fly swat. A French maid outfit or a French maid outfit? A French maid, M-A-I-D oh, outfit. Oh, okay, I, I know realize where you're when going. I say maid, it sounds a like French it, maid could, outfit. it was, could go uh, either way. Very nice. Uh, the hijacker, his hindquarters, and his accomplices were never identified. Uh, come on, it's been so many years since 1987, I don't need to do the math to know that it's long enough for you to come forward. You think they watch GMM? Gloat, I mean, there's someone on, yes, there's someone on Reddit who thinks they know who did it, but they're not saying they're the person who did it. Person who did it, hijacker, come forward, gloat. Take credit for it. Okay. Wave the mask around. You're awesome, we'll interview you on this show. Bust the mystery open. How about this inexplicable enigma? There is an aged stone bridge on the road to the famed Overton House in Scotland. Since the 1950s, many dogs, approximately one per year, and have been compelled to jump to their deaths onto the rocky rapids 50 feet below. 50 feet <laughs> below. That's feet. Mysteriously, some dogs that survived the drop were brought back to the bridge where they jumped again. What? Seriously, once a year, a dog jumps to his death off of this bridge. Now, a couple Is things to know. Is it the same day every year? No, but it's the same side of the bridge. Hmm. And it's always in clear weather, and it's always dogs with long snouts. Okay, okay so. Smeller, it, it has something to do with the smeller. Right, so they brought these people out, uh, some, some habitat, animal habitat experts to investigate what was going on. And this guy discovered that there was potent odor from male mink urine, and possibly, uh, well, minks that were peeing down there, I guess around the river, and apparently dogs just love mink urine. Mink pee. So much so that they'll kill themselves over it. 
Huh? Well, well, they're not, no, they're not killing themselves. They're going after. They're, go, the they're going after it. But I mean, this this is a big jump. This is fifty feet, as I said. But everyone, wow, everyone doesn't agree. They don't agree because local hunter John Joyce, he's a fifty-year-long resident of the area, says there is no mink around here. I can tell you that with absolute certainty. <laughs> no comment on the accent. Um, hmm. So he says there's no minks, so maybe it's a ghost. Why don't I don't know, what do you do next? What do you move to next? Well, Tom? I got an idea. Put up a fence or put down a net. A dog net. Yeah, put down a dog net, and then once one jumps, just you can get him in the net and ask him. Okay, any dogs that know what's going on, please come forward, is that what we're doing? <laughs> uh, I'm on to the next one, Rhett. Okay. On August 31st, 2004, at five, o'clock in the a.m. A Burger King employee found a man unconscious, sunburnt, sure did. and naked mm -hmm. beneath a dumpster of the restaurant. Beneath, I mean, <laughs> behind. <laughs> that would be a different story. Stack was a lot better at reading his notes. He had three depressions in his skull, apparently caused by blunt force trauma, red ant bites on his body, Ooh. but no ID. As I said, he was naked. Yeah. After waking up weeks later, he remembered his name was Benjamin. But that's it. That's all the guy remembered since 2004. He still doesn't know who he is. Benjamin Kyle. They added Kyle because that was just part of what they like put in the documents in the hospital. That's a good and, last and name. Police. How let's make his um, last name Kyle because it's a great first name. This guy's been through an ordeal to find out who he is. I mean, first of all, I'll look at his picture. He this looks is, so confused. This is the expression of who a man am I? Who does not know? What are who these red ant bites? He is. I'm serious, guys. Who am I? Maybe I should wear a mustache. FBI fingerprinting, DNA testing, facial recognition, hypnosis. He's even been on Dr. Phil, y'all. No. And Dr. Phil has a mustache. Maybe that's where he got it from. <laughs> He's, uh, he did a Reddit AMA in 2012 and again in 2013. Uh, there was one false Waffle House lead that came out of Oh, that. yeah. I know about those false, false uh, Waffle House leads. Reddit and Waffle House leads. I follow leads. them all the time. Dime right off the bridge. Uh, He's the only American citizen listed as missing despite his whereabouts being known. He's in this limbo where for the past eight years he cannot get a social security number because the government says he already has one, he just doesn't know what it is. So he Weird. can't get a job, can't do anything. Inexplicable. So, so he just poses for photos making that face. If you know who this man no, no, is. Don't ruin it for him. He's the awesome dude that ha doesn't know what's going on. Let us know. You know? Don't ruin it for him, He's, he won't be a celebrity anymore. How about this? On November 24th, 1971, a man calling himself Dan Cooper was on a Boeing 727 aircraft heading from Portland to Seattle. He dropped a note into a flight attendant's purse. It read, I have a bomb in my briefcase. I will use it if necessary. I want you to sit next to me. That was not a come on line. You are being hijacked. He then showed her the bomb. Okay. Okay. So this guy demands $200,000 for, you could do this in 1971. You couldn't get away with this these days, I, I, I don't think. Uh, I hope not. But he demands two, because he, he got on under an alias. He demands $200,000, four parachutes, a fuel truck standing by in Seattle to refuel the aircraft. And they do this. They, yeah. they give in to his demands, because really? that's what you did back in 71, apparently. He gets the parachutes, he gets the money, he lets all the passengers go, they get back up into the air heading to Mexico, they're gonna stop in Reno to refuel, but before they stop in Reno to refuel, he opens the door, puts the parachute on, I don't know why he needed four, he only took one, jumps off with the money. <clears throat> He's never been found. Despite, Did he take the stewardess who sat beside him? No, apparently she didn't like the bomb. Mm. Uh, uh, despite an extensive manhunt and FBI, FBI investigation, he's never been located. This remains the only unsolved air piracy in American aviation history. Really? This guy's out there. Here's some age progression of what he might look like. Kinda looks like an old man. <laughs> he, 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 he got pinker and older. I, I think, yeah, he suddenly went from black and white to color. That's what <laughs> happens as you age. <laughs> but I just think he didn't ask for enough money because if you're gonna go live you know, on the run in hiding for the rest of your life, he should have gone for more than 200K because it worked. He probably thought this will never work. Oh, I should have asked for two million or more. Or at least six parachutes. DB Cooper, if you're out there, please come and be a guest on Good Mythical Morning. And we know you're behind that Chicago Max Hedrum hijacking of the radio station too. Two so. birds, one stone, stone. DB Cooper. You're pretty awesome, dude. If you have any leads, how do they end in the Unsolved Mysteries? If you have any information that might lead to the send solving a, of these enigmas. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to 1987. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Please do that. <laughs> Thanks for liking and commenting on this video. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Hank. My hair goes up. Hi, I'm Ellen. My hair goes down. We're, We're from Leeds, England. England. Oh, I've got to go, Hank. Why? What time is it? It's time to spin the, the Wheel of Mythicality. Make sure you check out the latest episode of our podcast, Ear Biscuits. This week's special guest is Josh Sunquist. And we did a song biscuit with him that you can watch tomorrow. Oh, click through to Good Myth Gamora. We have one more mystery. The Russian radio station UVB 76. <laughs> Link is fabulous. Rhett is jealous. I'm, guess what? Fabulous! Oh, really? Ah, I wish, oh man! How Look does it at, feel? What is it like? It feels fabulous! Oh, that makes me hate you. <laughs> Cause I wanna be fabulous! UVB 76, 75, 59, 75, 59. He went through a bunch of numbers and then he said a bunch of names. Tatiana, Osa, Oksana. Anna, Elena, Pavel, Shuka, 